Hey, what's up, everybody? Bro Trio here, and well, we are finally getting a somewhat reliable schedule due to everything that's going on in the world right now. Uh, I have all the free time in the world because I got laid off, not to brag, but um, I have all this time, and we haven't done anything, so I haven't been editing. I've just been playing games, but we're finally back to it to get some good videos out there and i just played through final fantasy 7 remake and there was an optional quest to fight through a gauntlet of all the summons and it got me thinking you know what there were some awesome optional bosses throughout video game history we should do a list on that so here we are to talk about our favorite optional bosses this is the only time you're ever going to see Chrono Trigger at the bottom of a list. I guarantee that with Bro Trio. But the only reason it's at the bottom is because the boss isn't that good, but the reward for beating this boss yeah. is one of the best rewards ever for beating an optional boss. Melfix or Retinite, as his name was changed to in the subsequent remakes of Chrono Trigger, is the boss of the Sunken Desert, and he's, a, he's okay. He's an okay fight. There's a few interesting mechanics with him. But overall, eh, whatever. He's he's a whatever boss. He's hard if you don't have Marl. Yeah, he's yes. hard if you don't have Marl or anybody with water powers. You have to do that to, to make his sand hard so you can hit him harder. I, I don't know. It's weird. But what comes out of this is you get to see Robo being the biggest sweetheart in the world that he is. He's just like, yeah, I'll stay here for 400 years until this land and make it like habitable. And so... You, you just leave Robo there. In an instant, you just flash back 400 years in the future to go get Robo. That was not an instant for him. He is rusted, decayed, decrepit. He's just sitting there in a shrine dedicated to him. So you get luck out to fix him up again. And that leads to one of the most iconic scenes in Chrono Trigger, which is the campsite scene, where they're all sitting around, swapping stories. Magus is too cool for school. He's just got his arms crossed, leaning against a tree. But they're all just laying there, sw swapping stories, being friends. It's a great moment in Chrono Trigger. And then it leads to an even better one where Lucka wakes up and walks off and finds this weird green portal. Because they were talking about what they would go back and change. And Lucka did not want to talk about it. Go through the portal and you get to the moment before her mother lost her uh, the use of her legs in an accident in her father's lab. So if you get the password right, not only do you get more character moments with Lucka, Robo, and everybody, but you save Lucka's mother from being crippled for the rest of her life. Yeah, the, the first time I did it, I couldn't get the password right, and I felt so bad. <laughs> it's yeah. awful. She lets out a scream when she gets clamped by the machines, and like, why would you have that in your house, Taban? Why? <laughs> Not to mention, you actually do get an in-game reward, too, oh, yeah. with the Green Dream. Green Dream is amazing. Because uh, Robo's just been compressing this sap for 400 years, and it makes the one of the best items in the game. Doesn't it basically just cast, like, auto-life on you? Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. You put it on your weakest party member, and they're right back up if they fate. So, not only you get, do you get a great in-game item for this, you get... The, some of the most iconic scenes from the entire game just for beating this boss. And it's optional among all of that. It's ridiculous. Why is this optional? It seems so <laughs> important and integral to everything. But that is why Melfix made it. Did Not because he's a great boss, but because I think on this list he has the best rewards of any of these other bosses. We talked about Galdera in a previous video, the top bosses of 2018, and he made that spot for a reason. This is a tough fight, but it is just great. Like, you use every party member in this fight. Yeah, the first like, battle is with yeah. his foot. Yeah, you fight his foot. It's covered in, like, dead bodies. Yeah, eyeballs <laughs> and tentacles everywhere and, and then arms you, hanging out of him. Then you get up top and it's like his face, his daughter hanging out of his chest. He's got like a blade hand and a claw hand. and It's one of the most it's, JRPG it's looking bosses of all time. It looks like it's out of a horror game oh, yeah. at this point. And like, good lord, what it a gives monster. You, it gives you a pretty cool item 
but at that point in the game, it's basically useless. Yeah, yeah I guess it, you can it go prevents right. future and or like you can turn off encounters basically with it. Which yeah, I, I like, guess you if can, you wanted to play through yeah. like continue game plus, you could do it way quicker because you're already pretty much max level at this point anyway. I didn't think that's, about that. That's the only real reason I or can maybe, see for getting it. I, I thought maybe about if you want to get all the like, treasures. That's and, what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah. It would help for treasure hunting, I don't too. Know, but, but at that point, you, unless you're 100%ing it, you don't need them. Because yeah. you have all the good shit. But the main reason he's on this list is the journey up to that point. Because up, when you beat everybody's storylines, they you can kind of see a little bit of like strings connecting them, but nothing really definite. And the process of getting Galdara. You just link everybody's lores together and it's all big all one big story and it just makes sense and then you have to fight this nightmare monster. <laughs> Which it was it was just really out of place fighting a god all of a sudden. But it was so welcome and so rewarding. Moving on from those horrifying looking bosses to something a bit cuter, but still horrifying in its universe, is Bone Tail. Bone Tail is ready! From Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. The Pit of 100 Trials is not for the faint of heart. It's relatively easy at first, it gets harder and harder the deeper you go into it. And capping it off is a boss from one of the first acts of the game. <laughs> but dead. But dead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bone Tail is now in like the dry form from Mario, where it's just the living skeleton of its former self, and much harder to kill because Bone Tail is by far, like far and away, like the hardest boss in the game. The final boss, oh, yeah. not even close, no, doesn't hold the candle to it. So the Pit of 100 Trials is the way to really test your metal as far as Paper Mario goes, and it. <sighs> It ends up being pretty worth it. Bone Tail it, itself doesn't really give you anything. You get like one star point for it. You don't need it at that point anyways. But you get through the pit of 100 trials to that 100th floor to get the uh, Return to Sender badge. Now the badge only takes 7 BP to attach to Mario. And anyone that directly attacks Mario gets half that damage returned to them. So it helps out a good bit for direct attackers. Some Goombas can just kill themselves. And it's one of the like most unique items. It's pretty worth it. Not the best item ever, but not the worst. But the battle itself is really what is the reward here. And getting through the challenge among challenges for Paper Mario. I know what you're thinking. Is all of this list going to be turn-based RPGs? Mostly yes, but there's a couple of surprises in there, and one of them is Cromorax from Borderlands. Oh, crammy. Oh, man, that was, a, like, I, I have never been able to beat it normally. It's I've hard. always had to do the hide behind the rock trick, but it is one of the biggest challenges in really any Borderlands, but especially the first one. Yeah, because you can't just shoot it. Like most Borderlands bosses, you yeah. have to shoot it where it counts. You can yeah. only shoot yeah. it where it counts, actually. Like, yeah. It, yeah. it is invulnerable, other than its weak points. And once you get its weak points down, it starts doing its attacks, like, faster and faster. And it gets it gets harder the, the closer you get to the end. But, man, is it worth it when you finally pop that oh, and blister it on just, its back. You just and, get, like, the explosion of... Guns yeah. and treasure. Oh, lot of loot. Like, it's one of, if not the only way to get per pearlescent weapons, yeah. but it's definitely the best way to get them. Coming in at number six with the most out of place boss on this list, we're going to go with Kulex from Super Mario RPG. Uh, he's basically a Final Fantasy enemy. Yeah. He <laughs> looks like one. He talks like one he says unguard when you go to fight him and all kinds of stuff his music sounds like final fantasy yeah. music it plays the final fantasy fanfare when you get yeah. him it's such a weird <laughs> game man square's mario rpg is definitely an odd one he definitely looks like a boss from final fantasy he's got crystals everywhere that you also have to kill you even have to get to him 
with crystals. Yeah. Like in a Final Fantasy game, you go to Mole Town and talk to a bunch of moles and they have some crystals. <laughs> then you go to the sealed door in Monstro Town and Kulex is behind that door. So it's like, yeah, RPG stuff. I gotta get a bunch of crystals. Not only that, but he's weird. He's a great fight. And he gives you a really good reward for beating him. You get the Quartz Charm, which knocks your attack and defense up by 50%. And also stops auto like instant death if there's an instant death attack you survive it now but the main reason he's on here is because he's so cool why is he oh, here yeah. why is he in the mushroom kingdom and like he has a big like amount of respect for mario after you beat him he respects him he's like he's thanks for the fight bro and just leaves <laughs> so like he says something crazy like if in another plane we we would have been enemies but consider us comrades in arms or some crap it's just like, he's so out of place in probably the strangest entry into in the mario series up to that point and he's the strangest part of that weird ass awesome game one thing square enix really knows how to do is make a great damn optional boss as you may have been able to tell from most of this list <laughs> we're going to keep that trend going with sephiroth from kingdom hearts one because one well, he's not optional in final fantasy 7 and kingdom hearts 2 is not as hard as kingdom hearts 1 sephiroth so we're going to go with the first one because you start to fight him and he has an invisible health bar because you aren't doing any damage to him eventually you start doing yeah damage it makes the game makes you think you're doing it wrong yeah. yeah, I thought that you had to, like, I don't know, cast, like, fire or blizzard on him or something to make him vulnerable to attacks, yeah. but no, you just gotta wail on him until it works. Just destroy him. He's got the silver health bar, does not go anywhere until you beat him up enough. It's yeah. so odd. And make sure, before you step into this Coliseum fight, you stock the hell up on elixirs. Because Sephiroth has this glorious move for him called Sin Harvest, where he will use it. You can't block it. You can't avoid it. All you have to do is wait for it to happen, and he, bam, knocks out all your HP and MP, except one. MP is zero, though. You can't heal. You can't do anything, so you gotta pop that elixir before he comes charging at you with his long-ass sword. Well, he, he doesn't can, have to move much to get across that arena with that blade, Yeah, he man. can reach about halfway across, and then... Uh, continuing the trend of these bosses, the further you get into the battle, the harder it gets. He starts, like, casting supernova and stuff, like, following you with these energy bomb balls, like, raining down meteors, doing everything in the book that is just, like, outlandish and over the top you could think of. And, and Lance Bass was his voice. Yeah. Yeah, we did <laughs> have that. Happens. It actually yeah. wasn't bad, no, either. It, I it liked was. it. it decent amount i think the the new voice from the final fantasy 7 remake is way better but he didn't have his cat eyes in kingdom hearts and also in kingdom hearts whenever you beat him not only is it worth the, just the bragging rights that you beat sephiroth as this dopey ass little kid sora <laughs> but you also get the one winged angel keyblade and it's one of the better keyblades in the entire game it looks cool as hell and you just have one of the most satisfied feelings of any game just having known you beat Sephiroth. You don't even care about Ansem or the Heartless anymore. You beat Sephiroth and you're done. The rarest of genres to have an optional boss is a platformer. And one of the best ones that has huge amounts of nostalgia for me is Captain K. Rule from Donkey Kong Country to Diddy's Conquest. Not the original one, he doesn't count. I'm talking about the rematch in the Lost World when he brings everything he has in his musket at you. It is not a long fight. He does one full-on onslaught and then you hit him once and he's dead. That's it. But that onslaught lasts a longer than you oh, think. It's, it's a test of everything you've been through to that point. He shoots like the red ones out, he shoots the blue ones to freeze you out, the purple ones that reverse your controls. They're in 
these wacky, wild, and outlandish patterns that are really hard to dodge. You've got to jump right at the beginning and land right at the end. And if you don't, then you better get used to having your controls switch. Otherwise, you're getting out and Diddy or Dixie has to finish it alone. But this fight is, oh man, do you feel so cool if you do it? Because more times than not, you did it perfectly. And it's the, one of the ultimate cap-offs to the game. Has a cool, like, secret end cutscene where the Lost World just explodes in a sky beam and, like, Donkey, Diddy, and Dixie are watching from the cliffside. It's really cool, great for the SNES graphically at the time. And it was loads of fun and a great way to cap off the, like, optional portion of the game. One of the coolest ideas for an optional boss is a protagonist from a previous game. Very few games have done this, but one of the best is in Pokemon Gold and Silver. When you play through just both regions, you're feeling real proud of yourself. You're like, I can take on anything. And then you go in to the cave, look for Mewtwo. He's not there. Red is. The protagonist from the first game. Oh yeah. And he is ready to fight. Things are about to go down. And his team is stacked. <laughs> oh yeah, he's got he's got a Pikachu, he's got all three starters, fully evolved. Uh, what else? A he's Snorlax, got a, a Snorlax, Snorlax that is just and either beyond all just ugh, I hate Snorlaxes Snorlax. are hard to put down, yeah. especially in that level. And depending and then, on the version, he's got like an Espeon or a Lapras. It, it's just, there's different yeah, for that six they, one depending on what version you're playing. But Good lord, is he a tough fight by Pokemon standards and by... Well, I was a kid when I fought him first, but he seemed like the oh. biggest challenge of my life up yeah, to that yeah. point. Like, he was almost impossible to get through. It's still relatively hard, even if you're in the 90s. I mean, it's, uh, granted, a lot easier, but if you're on level with him, it is one of the most challenging and rewarding battles you can have. He brings everything at you. All his Pokemon are either 70 or 80, and he, it's the it's the fight of all fights for Pokemon, and no oh, one yeah. is around to witness it. Like this is the spectacle that would end like er, any broadcast going on in Kanto or Johto, and it's happening in this yeah. dark cave. The with world no one around. <laughs> in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. He actually triggers a lot of events, like you can get other starters and things like that. But in the first one, the battle is the reward, and ooh, it is, is it such a reward. A game series that is very well known for its bosses and spectacle is God of War, and God of War 2018 brought us one of the best optional bosses of all time, bar none. The Valkyrie Queen Sigrun took everything those other Valkyries threw at you, at least one element of it, and threw it right back in your face. She was a culmination of all of these monsters you faced before, and good lord was she tough. Super tough. She can kill you in one hit. Most of her attacks are really hard to avoid or block, if at all, and She's got some pretty sweet loot at the end of it, not to mention, it's it, God of War 2018 had a story behind everything you do. So, an optional boss with a story behind it, double points in my book. It's not just like, hey, go fight this thing. It's like, you, you need to go free all the Valkyries, because Odin trapped them in physical form, and that is not good, because they, like, usher the dead or whatever, Norse mythology. And that is... Part of the reason it's so great, she's the end of a quest. Like, most people, I believe, Sigrun's probably the last thing you do. Yeah. She's the ultimate test of everything. She is another boss on this list that also made our top 10 bosses of 2018. And she made both of these for a damn good reason. She is phenomenally fun to fight. A great test of all the skills and powers you've accumulated over these games. And there is some sweet sweet loot to top it all off. You may have noticed 90% of this list has been turn-based RPGs and that's for good reason they have some of the best optional bosses but one of the best turn-based RPGs is the monumental Final Fantasy 7. So you have to ask yourself who's it gonna be? 
Is Bro Trio going to pick Ruby Weapon or Emerald Weapon? Who's it going to be? It's not Ruby Weapon because I don't like Ruby Weapon or the reward you get for beating him. A Gold Chocobo, I already have Knights of the Round to beat his ass anyways, and he's Sand World pulling out my characters. I don't like him, I, plus I hate his design. So, Emerald's Weapon is the <laughs> best optional boss because this monster is floating around defending the planet. And if you accidentally run into him in your submarine, you're, you're screwed if you're not ready for it. Oh, yeah. And even if you are ready for it, if you're not, like, fully, fully ready for it and have the underwater materia, you better get it done fast and chip away at this a million HP within that's, 20 that's minutes. about the underwater? <laughs> Emerald Weapon is one of the harder fights in the game. He's got, there's so many options to attack. You can attack all his little shoulder lights. They're zipping you and zapping you and stuff. He's casting powerful magic. He absorbs all ice and water magic. It's very, very hard to fight Emerald Weapon. But once you finally get the hang of it and beat him, especially if you have the underwater materia and you can just postpone the fight as long as you want healing every time he basically kills you, you'll eventually get him and the reward you get in Earth Heart. And that thing is worthless. But you take it to the Calm Traveler and he gives you... Master Magic, Master Command, and Master Summon Materia. And for those of you who are, are uninitiated to Final Fantasy, equipping one of those gives you all the magic, all the command, or all the summons in the game. So you use one slot and you have everything. It's incredible. It's one of the best things to do in the game. The only other way to get those is to max out all of them yourself and then go to Cosmo Canyon and get them. But, if you beat Emerald Weapon, you can get two of them, so two characters are stacked, and you can... Ah, oh man, it's so useful to have. It's one of the best rewards in gaming, and that is... That's the reasons why Emerald Weapon is the top of this list. He's really iconic, it's hard, and it's really rewarding. The best combo of all three of them so that's our list please let us know if there's any optional bosses you like that weren't included here i'm sure there are but these are our personal picks so let us know yours in the comments below stay tuned subscribe to us and all that to get more bro trio content in the future